Sleep is a big deal. In this week's video, we're answering one of our community questions who writes, Dear Leslie, because of a recent challenging life circumstances, I've been finding myself having these bouts of severe anxiety in the middle of the night. I fall asleep okay, and then sometimes around four or five in the morning, I wake up with doom and gloom, and I don't know what to do. Would love some of your suggestions. So that is what we're talking about in this video. Hey, Leslie Huddard here. I am an acupuncturist, spiritual guide, and subtle body expert. I help empaths, healers, and sensitive people release the trauma trapped in their body without years of therapy by actually knowing the technical side of how the mind and the body fit together and how you can use those tools to move through the blocks that have been holding you back even when other things have not worked. In this week's video, we are answering the community question about sleep. So sleep is a big deal. And in this case, the question is what to do when because I was really stressed, I noticed I've gone through that stressful time. And now even though I fall asleep, okay, I'm waking up in the middle of the night, just mind ruminating, going through all these terrible scenarios. I haven't found anything that makes it stop. So I'm going to give you three major keys around this particular type of insomnia. So this is different when someone tells me that they're having consistent insomnia over a period of time without a known cause, I sometimes will tell them to look into things like their blood sugar and try having a protein rich snack sort of night and see if that changes to kind of see how much of this could be that aspect of their system. But in this case, I'm gonna start with a couple different suggestions because you've noticed that it came on or the insomnia started, especially right after some sort of traumatic or really difficult, stressful personal time. So the first clue is the time that you wake up. As an acupuncturist and Chinese medicine practitioner, what I know is that your main chi or primal energy of your body moves through the meridians of the body in a particular flow. So from 1 to 3 a.m. is generally the liver energy time. And when we use organs in Chinese medicine, we're talking a little bit about the physical organ, but it's way bigger. So it has to do with the emotions and also other functions of the body that Western medicine doesn't necessarily attribute to liver, but are under the category of what traditional medicine would call liver energy. So 3 to 5 a.m., if you're waking up in the 3 to 5 a.m., this tends to be lung. And the emotion of the lung is grief. So my question and my hypothesis that I want you to work out is to start to think about, are there some ways that I'm still, whatever happened, really deeply needing to grieve whatever that was? My suggestion would be to use some subtle body tools, and I can link some videos to get started with that below, in starting to turn towards where even though your mind might be over that situation, your body, which has a mind of its own, might be still holding on to grief and sadness sadness that is interrupting the flow of your more subtle energy or emotional energy of your body at this 3 to 5 a.m. time. So number one is pay attention to the organ clock and you can google this by googling like Chinese organ medicine clock or meridian clock. Sometimes you'll find cute little pictures on google and you can see what times are when for which organs. Number two, a great surface treatment. So not getting to the root of it. If it's more grief or emotional or physical, we always want to get to the deepest root, but sometimes we just need to freaking go to sleep. So some supplements that you can look into are a combination of lemon balm and passion flower. These two botanical medicines have been actually well researched to compete with or to do just as well in many studies as placebo and or traditionally prescribed antidepressant medications. So if you're having trouble with sleep and you need to be calmed in this deeper way, working on the lemon balm passion flower and often they come together. You can drink them in a tea, which is a little bit of a more gentler approach. You can look for them in capsules. I always recommend, especially with herbal teas, that they be organic because non-organic tea is a really high source of pesticides. So watch out for that. And as always, choose a supplement that is ideally prescribed by someone who is a trained herbalist. Again, medical disclaimer, nothing in this video is really meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any disease. And you should always work with your licensed practitioner. Look into those and take charge of your own health. Number three recommendation if you're having sleep issues is topical magnesium. Magnesium is a great relaxer for the smooth muscles of the body and it has a very yin 
heavier grounding quality. But magnesium is not super well digested in the digestive tract. So you have to take a lot of it and sometimes you will get bowel irritation before you can actually get enough into your system. So a great way to get magnesium is topically. Think about traditions where people went to soak in the mineral baths. So in this way, you can get magnesium topically by using a magnesium oil spray. And I'll link to one of my favorites below that I use. I like to use this at night. You don't have to spray it on the area specifically. So if your face is tired and not spraying magnesium oil on your face, you just want to spray the magnesium oil on sort of the more sensitive inner skin. So sort of the inner parts of the legs, the belly, the parts that don't get a lot of sun because then the skin's a little more sensitive and will absorb it a little more. So you can do a couple of those sprays working up towards five, 10, whatever is the recommended by your practitioner. And you can often find magnesium uh, online. I'll create a link down there or also just at your general health food store. Those two things will help calm the body. And in the meantime, you can go looking or get some support for what is the deeper part that again, maybe my mind is over and I intellectually understand what happened and I'm over it and I'm processing it, but clearly your body, which has a mind of its own is not, and getting some support from that can really actually help to release those things from the inside. We see this all the time with subtle body work. People come into our trainings with anxiety, ADHD. I just talked with a client today who's had really lifelong dyslexia and always felt really ashamed and difficult and have trouble getting her words out and worried about what other people think. And she literally said, yeah, really by the third week that was gone and I really don't care. It's actually fine. It's just a part of who I am. I don't notice it so much anymore. What I want you to know as a side note is that there are these different parts of you. Yes, we understand things mentally in our mind, but you've noticed that just knowing it in your mind doesn't change it in the way that you're able to act and show up and be present in the world. That is your subtle body. It's like the iceberg underneath. And when you get the tools to understand how that works, what the rules are, and what you need to do to actually line up and release that from the body, that's where the magic starts to happen. So you deserve great sleep and great healing and really this restful time to process and digest whatever happened, not on the mental level only, but the physical and the emotional as well. I hope these tools will help you. If you'd like more tools and tips, go ahead and subscribe. We do a video every week. And if you want to ask me questions, check out the link to our Inner Circle membership where you get access to my whole library of courses, including Healing Anxiety Naturally, where I teach you about supplements and essential oils and what type of anxiety you have and how to find out your energetic type, all sorts of keys, as well as getting to ask me coaching questions in our live gatherings twice a month, every month. So glad to be here with you. May you be happy and free. I will see you next week.